The heliotrope is perfectly adapted to our moderate climate with cold winters and comparatively hot summers. One side is completely glazed and the other side has only very small windows and is heavily insulated. Now, in winter, what do you want? You want the sun to heat up the building. So the house follows the sun with a glazed side so that it always is exposed to the sun so that the sun can heat up the building so that you don't need any, any radiators. Um, in summer you want to avoid that. So the insulated side with the small windows follows the sun. That's the basic idea. Uh, that's why it rotates. It was certainly not a model which was for, for economic viability. It was expensive, but it was an e experiment. The, the idea was not to come up with you know, uh, cheap living space. The idea was to do the first plus energy house and to do something spectacular. Um, and in, in, basically, it's the house where the architect lives. It's Mr. Dish's own house, so he could do whatever he wanted. Um, you won't save the planet by repeating the heliotrope model. Yeah? Um, what we did is we learned from the heliotrope and then did something completely unspectacular, which is the solar settlement, in terms of <coughs> architectural typology. It's just terraced houses, and uh, it's not exactly like cheap. Um, it's, it's one family homes, uh, but uh, this was absolutely viable. You always want to start with energy efficiency. Before you think about having photovoltaics or solar thermal or any you know, machines involved, you, you have to reduce the consumption. Um, and what you do with a passive house uh, concept to reduce the consumption is first insulate your walls. Um, second, have good windows. Third thing, you, don't, you want to have the house airtight so that you don't lose any uh, energy by, you know, just air passing in any uh, uncontrolled ways through, through little gaps. Um, and then if you do that, you need technical ventilation um, because otherwise the house would get damp. But if you have technical ventilation, um, you can have heat recovery. Um, so if you blow out the used air and take in the like day like today, uh, cold, fresh air, um, there's a little kind of storage uh, uh, which keeps the energy uh, inside the house. That's the four major things. And then you think about where do I get the rest because you still have demand. You still need electricity and you might still need a little bit uh, of energy for, for room heating or for your air conditioner or whatever you use for cooling um, and also for hot water. And uh, here we did uh, all the roofs with photovoltaics. Um, and as for heating, there is a central heating plant for the whole of the Bourbon area. We are part of that. Um, and this is a cogeneration unit or two, one with ga uh, biogas and the other one with wood chips. So this is for hot water and the little room heating that we might need in winter. Uh, you have an extra investment back then when we did these houses of maybe 20,000 euros for uh, having, for saving energy, so for the insulation of the walls, good windows, um, making the house airtight uh, and uh, having a ventilation with heat recovery, um, 20,000 and you save more than 2,000 euros per year, for heating costs. Um, so after 10 years, return on investment period is over. Und als wir dann hier eingezogen sind, 
und hier wohnten, spürten wir sehr schnell diese wunderbare Wohnatmosphäre. Und deshalb spreche ich seit einiger Zeit von einem Wohlfühlhaus. Und dann machte mir das Haus noch ein ganz besonderes Geschenk. Ich war zwölf Jahre lang, hatte ich mittelschweres Asthma. Und ein paar Wochen hier drin gewohnt, es ist weg. Eine unheilbare Krankheit ist weg. Man sagt, diese Häuser seien acht bis zehn Prozent teurer als vergleichbare. Aber das haben wir schon längst eingefahren, weil wir fast null Heizkosten haben. Ja, nur an langen, grauen Tagen brauchen wir ein bisschen Fernheizung. Und das waren letztes Jahr Kosten von 146,20 Euro im ganzen Jahr Heizkosten.